Jack, you finally come to. Danazione. That's the second time I've ended up on the floor today. I should start taking boxing lessons. It seems to be all the rage right now. What are we going to do now? We're trapped. And the plane will leave soon. We need to get out of here. Jack? Victoria? Yeah, it's me. You should have followed my advice and never left that store. I have a hard time following the advice. You know that wasn't my idea. Right from the beginning, I tried to make sure you- When this is all over, remind- Jack, I know- Wrong. Betting money on a lame horse. Jack, neither of us can stop- Destiny. Destiny? You keep repeating- As hard as it might be to believe, I'd like to let that girl go too. She's certainly not responsible for this situation, but it's our duty to make sure that she fulfills the purpose for when- And since when does Black- Black Lily? Do you really think I work for Black Lily? No? So what? A special partnership? Jack, Black Lily is just a pawn we use to get the girl here in New York. It's them working for us. And who is this us? The less you know, Jack. Victoria. I'm sorry, Jack. Maybe one day we'll meet again. I gave specific orders that you and your friend be relieved, but don't try to- Victoria. Goodbye, Jack. Victoria. This whole thing is ridiculous. I don't care if it's ridiculous or not. I'll stop her, even if it's- And what should I use them with? Yes, it could work. And now, let's get out of here. Greta, take cover! Greta, I have to stop that plane from- What are you going to- I don't know yet. You get the car. It's hidden in the trees near the entrance. The keys are on the dash. Okay. Keep the engine running. We need to leave as soon as I get the girl. Jack? Yes? Be careful. There's no time to be careful. Not this time. Greta, go! Dannazione. It's too late. It looks like you're too late, Del Nero. What are you doing here? Why aren't you on that plane? I hate traveling. I'm not the kind of guy who crosses the desert on a camel. I prefer the comfort of the big city. Moreover, had I left... I would have missed the chance to deal with you. You made me look ridiculous in the eyes of the organization, and I don't have any intention of letting you get away with it. And what do you want to do? Kill me? I can see it on your face that you've never shot anyone. You're not that kind of guy. You send your men to do your dirty work. You're right. I've never shot anyone. Even though many men and women died because I ordered it. How brave. But you know, there's a first time for everything. I'm dead. There is nothing else I can do. Emily, Greta, I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. It's over. I'm dead. Emily, Greta, I'm sorry that I couldn't protect you. I let myself get knocked off by the first idiot that came around. Tomorrow, I'll be one of the many names that fill the newspaper's crime report. Or maybe not even that. Maybe they'll just throw my body in the East River, or in some dump. No one will realize I'm gone. Except for that stingy Slavonsky when he'll come to collect the rent. Nice life. Who knows what kind of place this is. I only see strange white lights in front of me. Is this heaven? <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. Heaven isn't the place for a washed up detective with a drinking problem. It's got to be hell. At least I'll see a lot of my old friends. I thought hell would be different. You know, fire, flames, strange creatures with horns. There's just water here. Water and strange hanging wires. A huge clock suspended in midair. I know I should be surprised, but I doubt this is the strangest thing I'll see in this place.
A pub in the middle of hell. I'm starting to like this place. There's a guy at the bar. Jack, it's been ages. Sean? Right. Haven't seen you for a while. What is this place? This is no place, and is nowhere. Am I dead? Yes, Jack. You're dead, like me. Well, if this is hell, it isn't too bad. True. The booze is free, and you don't have to worry about your liver. You're already dead. I'm sure you have a few questions for me. Ask what you want, but I'm warning you, we don't have much time. I didn't think that time would be a problem here. It counts more than you can imagine. Come on, Jack, ask what you want to know. Why did you lie at Valenti's trial? Oh, I thought you'd ask me that. I spent a year in the clink for that. I think you owe me. You're right. The answer is simple. The most obvious one, money. You sold out for money? Right. A police's salary wasn't enough to pay me old man's debts. He loved to play them horses, and he was in deep with the Valenti family. That good for nothing. He was a bad father, and an even worse gambler. He bet it all on the horses, and never won once. We were at the track the day my sister disappeared. Too focused on watching that damned horse that no one would have placed a book on to realize that his daughter wasn't there anymore. My old man. A man that the world would have been better off without. He racked up so many debts that I would have needed two lives to get the money together. And Valenti knew it. That's why he offered me a solution to the whole problem. Both his kids had been arrested for booze trafficking. The judge gave him a year in the slammer each. But those two brats spoiled by their mob father wouldn't have lasted a week in prison. Valenti's idea was simple. I was supposed to get his kids out of this mess by saying that I was the one who committed their crimes. I would have been discharged from the police, and I would have served their sentence. In exchange, me old man's debts would have been like they'd never happened. But I didn't know your name would come up at the trial, Jack. You were supposed to be left out of this whole mess. Why haven't you ever told me this story? The week after the trial, me old man died. According to the police, some crazy guy put a bullet in his back during a bar fight. Funny coincidence, especially considering that the day before, a guy tried to stab me in Harlem for no reason. Arturo Valente wanted me dead. His kids were free. He got what he wanted, and killing me was the easiest way to cover his tracks. Had I told you this story, he would have tried to kill you too. I decided to leave New York and move to Los Angeles, thinking that I could leave everything behind me. But you can't forget your past. No one wanted a corrupt ex-police officer underfoot. It was impossible to find a job. Until one day, when some fat guy comes up to me in a bar and offers me a job, I'd have to kill a guy who was in Los Angeles on business. A guy comes out of nowhere and offers you a job as a hitman. What kind of story is this? I thought the same thing. The fat guy showed me a photograph of the future victim, sure that I'd accept. And he was right. I did. The guy in the photograph was Arturo Valente. Because of him, I didn't have a family or a job anymore, and the only thing I had left was a thirst for revenge that only an Irishman can understand. I did the job, and so I started working for Black Lily. Good story, huh? Maybe I'll write a book about it one day. I wonder if there are any publishers around here. Maybe I'll ask around. What am I doing here? You're trying to understand. Understand what? What destiny is. Destiny? I'm just a private detective who spends half of what he makes on booze, and the other half to pay the rent for an office that looks like a dump. What destiny do you think I might have? I'm not talking about your destiny, Jack, but the girl's. She's just a little girl, kidnapped by a wacky archaeologist from who knows where. So, you really think that Professor Zendler was nuts? You think that those dreams you had were due to exhaustion? That it was only a series of coincidences that brought you here? A coincidence that your friend with the red hair knew Marsetti? A coincidence that the owner of the dive you live in is the same guy who hosted Nicholas? Jack, that girl can change the future. If she could really do what you say, don't you think she'd have done something to avoid all this? I don't know how it works. I kill people. I don't study ancient prophecies. But I do know one thing. If you're here, you've been given a chance. What are you talking about? 
Coming here, you must have seen some sort of floating clock. Yes, too peculiar not to notice it. That's your life, Jack. And if you are here, the hands have stopped. But you can go back. You mean I can be resuscitated? I'll be walking around New York like one of those zombies from horror novels? It doesn't work like that. When you go back, you won't remember this place, and you'll do the same things you already did. Great. I can't live, but I can die as often as I want. Right. Or maybe something could change. Destiny could give you a second chance. How? You won't know until you try. Goodbye, Sean. Goodbye, Jack. A huge clock suspended in midair. I know I should be surprised. It seems to have stopped. And what do you want to do? Kill me? I can see it on your face that you've never shot anyone. You're not that kind of guy. You send your men to do your dirty work. You're right. I've never shot anyone. Even though many men and women died because I ordered it. How brave. But you know, there's a first time for everything. It was destiny, Del Nero. How is it possible that I'm still alive? Sean's bottle of rye stopped the bullet. Who would have thought? Saved by a movie cliché. Sean, it looks like I owe you my life. You're a lucky guy. You're the one they call the Turk. And you're the detective they're all talking about. Are you here to avenge the death of your friend, Marzetti? My friend Marzetti? I hope you're joking. I wanted him dead more than you did. I never liked him. The way he treats women is awful, and his joints are as disgusting as the people who go there. So what do you want from me? You're more important than you believe, and I need you for my plans. What plans? I don't have to tell you. What makes you think I'll go along with your plans? I'll take you to the girl. Why would you do that? Let's say I have an interest in throwing a monkey wrench in Miss Diaz's plans. I see. So what do you want to do? Are you coming with me? When are we leaving? As soon as my man convinces your red-headed friend to come with us. What does Greta have to do with all this? You're all involved. Even the most insignificant extra can change the plot of a whole film, De Nero. And I don't want that to happen. I'm a perfectionist. I've already seen your perfectionism in action. You'll have time to complain later on, De Nero. We have a plane to catch now. Ha <laughs> ha. I hope you don't have problems with the heat. Because where we're going... They say the sun could kill you. Traveling with you? I think the sun is going to be the least of my problems. I'm starting to understand why Miss Diaz is so fond of you. I've known you for five minutes, and I like you already. I hope you aren't upset that the feeling isn't mutual. Del Nero, forget everything that you think you know about this story. You don't know anything. You've never seen the dark face of a god. The sun is already high when we take off. The plane flies into the sun, and the enormous ball of fire envelops the plane until every bit of its metal fuselage disappears. For a moment, I think that that's exactly where we're headed, going to challenge the sun, immense and unreachable, considered a god since ancient times. But before takeoff, I glanced at the flight plan, and I found out that our destination is slightly closer. The city of Damascus, Syria, that's where we're headed.